will submit second edition first meeting. This is started by IPS AP chapter to encourage young psychiatrists in academic activities. IPS AP chapter is committed to bring out young budding psychiatrists onto this platform. On this occasion, I congratulate Dr. GVS Murtigaru, President IPS AP branch, Dr. Lokeshwar Reddigaru, Vice President, Dr. I. Sarachandra, Honorary General Secretary, Dr. Kishore Kumar, Honorary Treasurer, Dr. Vijay Chandra Reddy, Honorary Editor, and Dr. Radhika Reddy, Madam, IPS CAP, South Zone Representative. I also invite senior psychiatrist Prasad Rao, sir. Welcome, sir. I thank Dr. Chaitanya Kumar, speaker, and Dr. G. V. Raman Rao, sir, chairperson, for accepting our invitation. Now I request Dr. G. V. S. Murtigaru to give his message. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening to everyone. Thank you, madam. And <laughs> I welcome you all to this uh, webinar. As Dr. Uh, Madam just now mentioned, that this is the uh, first webinar in our second edition of uh, Young Mind Summit, and uh, after the APCI 2024. So, uh, as she already mentioned, we are committed in continuing this uh, web webinar series to encourage our young um, budding psychiatrists, and I expect and I hope. Uh, all the young and uh, budding psychiatrists to take part into this initiative and utilize this uh, platform for development. And finally, before um, one last request to all the members is that, okay, uh, kindly participate in our upcoming uh, CME in Visakhapatnam, that is state, uh, AP state uh, CME on suicide prevention on September 15th. September 15th, Visakhapatnam, we already released the first voucher and it's free. And I, I request everybody to participate and make it a grand success. Thank you all. Now over to Lokesh. Lokesh. Uh, good evening, everyone. On behalf of uh, CME committee, IPS AP state branch, I invite everyone to this uh, uh, first uh, webinar of the second session of Young Minds Summit. Uh, and it's I'm very happy to introduce the chairperson for today's lecture, uh, Dr. G. V. Raman Rao, uh, though for many, he, he doesn't need much uh, introduction, but for the young colleagues, for young postgraduates who have joined, I would like to introduce Sir. Sir has done his MBBS from Rangaraya Medical College, Andhra Pradesh, and he did MD Psychiatry from Andhra Medical College, Vishakapatnam. He has, he is an international distinguished fellow of American Psychiatric Association since 1st January 2023. He held the post of President IPS AP State Branch in the year 1995-96. He was the President of IMA Beamwaram Branch from 2006 to 2007. And he has also received the Best President of IMA AP State Award uh, during his tenure of uh, IMA President. And he has been the Chairman for Task Force on Yoga and Meditation. Chairperson of the Subcommittee for Homeless uh, Persons with Mental Illness of IPS AP State Branch. And he has been the organizing chairperson for the International Conference on Spirituality on the occasion of International Yoga Day 2021. And he has been a recipient of Dr. D.S. Raju Oration Award in the year 2021-22. And he was former Associate Professor of Psychiatry at Ashram Medical College, Elur. And he has been the member of State Mental Health Authority for the in the year 2023. And currently he is the consultant psychiatry at Shanti Hospitals, Bhimvaram. And his son and daughter-in-law, Dr. Subhash and Dr. Sri Vidya are also, are also psychiatrists who practice along with him. And uh, I request uh, Dr. G. V. Raman Rao, sir, to take over uh, the, for the further proceedings for the introduction of the speaker and the topic. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rokesh Sharadiharan, for a very kind introduction. And I thank the executive for giving me this opportunity to chair the session, very important session. Uh, good evening, Dr. Prasad Ravgaru, for attending this meeting. Uh, the medically unexplained symptoms are they purely psychological, a critical review by Dr. Chaitanya Kumar Nerella uh, from Karnur. He is a consultant psychiatrist, district mental health program, Karno, and he has done his MBBS in the government medical college, Anantapur, and a DPM from NRM College, Vijayawada, and DNB from Gujarat Institute of 
Mental Health Ahmedabad. Regarding the today's topic, it's very important because the prevalence rates are quite high even in the uh, epidemiological catchment area study in, conducted in the US. 4% of this uh, you know, population are suffering from uh, medically unexplained symptoms and uh, 10 to 30 percent uh, of the population in the hospital setting they also have this uh, especially primary care uh, setting we have this problem almost one third of the patients who visit the primary care doctors they suffer from the, uh, the so-called uh, multiple or medical unexplained symptoms they're important because of their disabling nature as well as their health care utilization, which is very, very high. The nomenclature, unfortunately, it keeps changing with each addition of the classificatory systems like the ICD and the DSM. Previously called as Brickett's hysteria, then somatization disorder, followed by somatoform disorders, and presently as somatic symptom disorder in DSM and bodily distress disorder in ICD-11. Regarding a clinical presentations as clinicians, we see different manifestations in different age groups. For example, in children and adolescents, usually they manifest with pain, abdomen, cyclical vomitings, shortness of breath, hyperventilation, conversion disorder, so on and so forth. In the same way, adults manifest with multiple symptoms like body aches, asthenia, and they are diagnosed as chronic fatigue syndrome, or fibromyalgia, or neurasthenia, etc. The J symptoms are common and they are diagnosed as non ulcer dyspepsia and irritable bowel syndrome, etc. In middle age and late life, medical and psychiatric comor comorbidities they exist, coexist with uh, these uh, multiple or uh, medically unexplained symptoms. The main difference between the organic conditions or the medical conditions and the functional symptoms is the predominant emotional component and attention-seeking behavior, as uh, you know, pressed by our seniors like Venkobrahogar and others. And of course, now it has come into the diagnostic classificatory system DSM-5. I am sure today's speaker, Dr. Chaitanya Kumar, a dynamic speaker, will enlighten us about the probable ideological factors and biopsychosocial underpinnings. Over to the speaker, Dr. Chaitanya. Very good evening to all the uh, senior doctors. And I especially thank IPS AP State Branch uh, for giving me this opportunity. So, without any delay, we will go into the current today's topic medical and explained symptoms. Are they purely psychological? Yeah, a critical yeah. review. Yeah. Medically unexplained symptoms. Uh, being a psychiatrist or being into this uh, uh, specialty of branch, the tricky point is we need to explain these symptoms. So, in this presentation, we will be covering some introduction epidemiology, some probable causes, no, not so specific, but some causes, concept of mind, DSM, and ICD, what are the nomenclature given to these symptoms, and uh, under DSM 5, what are the types? Plus for identification, queries in the mind of patient, some assessment, diagnosis, and treatment. So these medical unexplained symptoms, literature goes into the psychosomatic term or psychosomatic medicine, uh, which are derives from the Greek word, psyche means soul, soma means body. So all the diagnostic things, what we are seeing, mentioning somatoform disorders, though the nomenclature is changing, broad group of illness where the bodily symptoms are a major component. Under these side headings, medical unexplained symptoms, taking back into history, the term a psychosomatic medicine fits into it and Greek literature, its terms derived from Greek literature, psyche means soul, soma means body, where all these symptoms of the body is due to mind and body interaction. Classical Presentations would be repeated physical symptoms expressed by the patients and seeking for persistent request for medical investigation even though the patients have been reassured that there are no physical basis. History and physical examination by a doctor does not indicate 
any presence of a medical condition. Investigations, though, have been repeatedly done, will be mostly normal and do not explain the current physical symptoms. The problem here is, even though multiple consultation and investigations have been done, patients are convinced that physical symptoms are undetected and untreated bodily derangement. See, this uh, makes the treatment approach and this uh, belief of the patients makes us difficult in managing the patient. Complaints are not imaginary. Patients actually do experience these symptoms. This is the point, core point, where we have to focus in managing the uh, patients of these symptoms. And this point makes the difference between a psychiatrist and non-psychiatrist. Coming to epidemiology, as uh, Ramana Rao sir has already told, female to male ratio is 4 to 1 percent, prevalence 1 to 5 percent. And see the age group of presentation where it is. Before 30 years of age, these symptoms are going to appear. Age group of presentation is before 30 years of age where person of 30 years of age is very productive and crucial age group these patients are landing up in somatoform disorder. And another point, low educational status and low income. This makes the treatment again and body to make the patient understand because of their educational status, it makes us difficult to understand how body and mind are related. Symptom, another problem is symptoms at times are similar to other illness and it will take several years for uh, making the diagnosis. And 15 to 30% of visits to general physicians land up in some form disorder. Some, not those specific, some probable causes of these symptoms are biological. Some patients are genetically predisposed where they have heightened or increased sen sensitivity to bodily symptoms. And neurotransmitter systems or dysregulation of stress response system is also seen in some patients. Psychological causes would be unconsciously expressed emotions, distress through physical symptoms, some psychological traumas, unresolved conflicts and sexual abuse. Cognitive causes would be maladaptive thought process or cognitive biases, which influences the uh, perception interpretation of physical symptoms in a wrong way. Social and environmental causes would be starting from the childhood, childhood neglect, severe family discard or dysfunctional families, various stressful life events in life events, and some cultural beliefs and societal attitudes. Social reinforcement and secondary gain features will cause the persistence of symptoms to occur. Interpersonal causes would be poor interpersonal relations, relationships, communication, miscommunication patterns, and some personality trait persons are more prone to land in some form disorder. They are avoidant and paranoid personality, obsessive compulsive traits. Since we are dealing with mind and body interactions, we would, I would like to go into some concept of mind. So this is the person who doesn't require any introduction or uh, thing, who is the main person in explaining the concept of mind. And this is for those who like him to see with a cigar and in a very stylish pose of Sigmund Freud. Freud concepts of topographical mind, uh, concept of mind and structural theory of mind beautifully represented in one picture. Topographical model of mind is describing the mind into conscious, pre-conscious, unconscious mind. The structural theory, he said, superego, eat and ego are the terms which he has coined. So when we understand this picture, superego is covering all the conscious, pre-conscious and unconscious mind. And eid, eid, which he described as inner distincts, is mostly in unconscious mind. And as he said, superego is a balance between ego is a balance between superego and he. And coming flu sites would be the terms or nomenclatures where DSM 4, 5, ICD 10, and 11, what they have mentioned. Under DSM 5, 
which is a uh, old one. Somatization disorder, undifferentiated somatoform disorder, somatoform disorder, not otherwise specified, pain disorder, hypochondriasis, conversion disorder, psychosocial factors, affective medical condition, factitious disorder. So all these are being uh, clubbed into and made into some, uh, minimize the terms under DSM-5. Somatic symptom disorder and related disorders, also called SSRD, where Somatic symptom disorder, illness, anxiety disorder, conversion disorder, psychological factors affecting a medical condition, factitious disorder, other specific and non-specific symptom disorders, which we would be in coming slides seeing the individual disorders in some with some details. These are the ICD-10 terms given to these physical, medical, and experience symptoms are somatization disorder, hypochondrical disorder, undifferentiated somatoform disorder, somatoform autonomic dysfunction, persistent somatoform pain disorder and others. So ICD-11, that nomenclature has been entirely changed and these patients presenting with this body-mind interactions on somatoform symptoms are grouped into disorders of bodily distress or bodily experience where under it there are four, four categories again. Bodily distress disorder, body integrity dysphoria, other specified disorder of bodily distress or bodily experience, disorder of bodily distress or bodily experience unspecified. Now we will go, we will look into some of the nomenclature or terms or diagnosis given by the DSM-5. First one is somatic symptom disorder. So many physical complaints ranging or presenting in many organ systems of the body and typically presenting over a period of several years and which causing significant impairment in important areas of functioning. Functioning of the patient is impaired and continuously the patient will have the treatment seeking habit or sometimes both. As we said, symptoms would be in any system take CNS or CVS, uh, gastrointestinal system. Symptoms would be n number of the symptoms. These are some of the exams which we mentioned, but uh, there are many symptoms. And the, and the main characteristic is symptoms are fluctuating and they are very chronic. As we said, by the time patient reaching a psychiatrist, it, sometimes it would, it would take many years. We have seen patients coming to us even after 10 to 20 years also. Some epidemiology of the somatic symptom disorder. First one is a female male ratio, one to two percent lifetime prevalence is there. Again, low education, low income is the risk factor. More present uh, age group suffering is less than 30 years. Second diagnosis is illness anxiety disorder, where previously it was called as hypochondriasis. The focus in illness anxiety disorder is, name itself is telling, the patient is more concerned about his disease rather than his uh, symptoms. So, patient diagnosed as having hypochondriasis or illness anxiety disorder will always be in search of what disease he has, what disease he fits into, what is the treatment for the disease. So, the focus is always on the disease. So, this is a picture representing where the person with hypochondriasis or say in general somatic, uh, somatic symptom disorder consulting a doctor. Doctor is saying, if you don't like my diagnosis, you would seek a second opinion. And doctor is, we can see a doctor is more worried how the patient is receiving or how he, he, he can understand. And the patient is saying, I have already done that. You are about the 10th one. So hypochondriasis is six, six months or more of non-delusional preoccupation of having a serious disease. For example, a minor headache, the patient may uh, think that our patient may believe that he is having a brain tumor. Again, severe distress in normal functioning, not accounted by any medical or psychiatric condition. And hypochondriasis patient Difficult to convince the diagnosis since they are having poor insight into their diagnosis or the symptom. 4 to 6 percent is the prevalence. Sometimes it will be 15 percent. And both men and women are equally affected. 
age group is 20 to 30 percent of age. Few differences between somatic symptoms of somatization or hypochondriasis. Hypochondriasis where the focus is on disease, somatization the focus is on the symptoms. The patient continuously in somatization explaining the symptoms, seeking attention for symptoms, telling n number of symptoms involving n number of or uh, systems in the body. Whereas hypochondriasis, the focus is less on symptoms. Then less is specific in hypochondriasis, but somatization will start mostly less than 30 years of age. Hypochondriasis, both men and women are equally affected. Somatization, women are more affected. Next, coming to next diagnosis, that is conversion disorder, also called functional neurological symptom disorder. Symptoms would be either in voluntary motor symptoms, whether it would be sensory functions or visceral symptoms. Usually, conversion disorder symptoms would be preceded by any conflict or stressor. Previously, this, this was called as hysteria or conversion reaction or dissociative reaction. One clinical phenomenon called labella interference we can see in conversion disorder patients uh, where the patient Though the symptom presentation or the symptom what the patient is presented with is in with the severe uh, uh, symptom, but the concern about the symptom in patient is very less or we can say negligible concern of the patient about the symptom. This phenomenon is called labella indifference. Though not diagnostic clinical uh, phenomenon, but we can see in some patients this phenomenon conversion disorder. Some motor symptoms Involuntary movements like tics, seizures, abnormal gait, weakness, paralysis, aphonia. As we see, if the symptom is presentation presented like weakness or seizure-like activities, um, concern is more with the family members, but the patient will not be that much concerned. Some sensory deficits like blindness, difficulty in vision or difficulty in hearing, sometimes midline anesthesia or I can't see, I, I am having only tunnel vision. These are some and some visceral symptoms would be psychogenic vomitings without any organic cause, Sym syncope, giddiness, uh, like pain abdomen, sometimes frequent passing of stools, difficulty in urination or urinary retention. So coming to next diagnosis, that is facticious disorder, uh, DSM-5. So it's also called Munchausen syndrome, where the patient fabricates exaggerates or creates sometimes the physical or psychological symptoms. See, uh, faked or induced, taking something to cause vomiting and facticious disorder patient, uh, it's described like patient likes to be like a patient where the psychological gain or psychological Thing what the patient wants is he doesn't want to become a normal person. Keeps on changing the doctor, keeps on undergoing investigations, may go into the extent of undergoing surgeries also. And as usual, it, it takes many years for such patients to reach a psychiatrist. Coming to comorbidity issues, somatic symptom related, uh, so related disorders are associated with personality disorders, substance related disorders, general anxiety, phobia, suicidal threats are common, but actual intent is rare. Medical histories would be very long histories would be there. They are vague, non-specific. They are frequently, they change the history and history is always confusing. Describe the complaints in dramatic, emotional, exaggerated fashion. Would emphasis again and again for investigations and examination, even though they have underwent n number of times. This flowchart is described, will give a broad picture for us, where when a patient presenting to us with some unexplained symptoms or say suspicious symptoms, conscious attempt to deceive or no conscious attempt to deceive, this we can differentiate through history while talking with the patient. Anyway, patient of somatic symptom disorder coming with long history, and with the n number of uh, investigations along with him, when you sit with the patient, talk with the patient, and you take history, through, we will get to some conclusion that 
there is whether there is a conscious attempt to deceive or whether there is a concept conscious attempt to be uh, fabricate or indulge in some symptoms but when we come to a conclusion that there is no obvious conscious attempt in producing the symptom or fabricating the symptom they would land in somatic symptom disorder illness anxiety disorder or, or hypochondriasis or conversion disorder we have seen the differences among the three and when you come to know or uh, you guess some conscious attempt is there to deceive or fabricate the symptom when the chief goal is psychological or primary means as we said the patient or himself or his conscious or mind is uh, telling him to be like a patient or wishes to be like a patient he lands up in practices disorder or when the chief goal is some secondary gain some external thing some financial gain some um absent from the job he will land in malingering though not diagnosed under this thing commonly suspicious symptoms we see malingering patients in our day to day clinical practice external gain and some secondary gain obvious in malingering deliberately they produce the symptoms when they get the secondary gain what they want the symptoms are immediately disappear and usually they are unwilling to undergo any uh, test in general any painful test so clues for identification of somatoform disorder would be multiple consultations before reaching a psychiatrist referred as doctor shopping and multiple investigations revealing that there is no organic base for the symptoms what the patient has been presented with or some minor abnormality in the investigation say ct brain or mri brain or some blood investigation non specific uh, abnormality is seen but they are not explaining the current symptoms of the patient patient history is saying this too so most probably we can come to a conclusion that we are dealing with somatoform disorder patients so seeing all these things coming to clinical challenges we face when we are dealing with a patient of somatoform uh, disorder uh, patient these are the things in the mind of the patient am i having a really a disease or not when will these symptoms decrease am i treatable really why symptoms are for so many years why doctors are telling that there is no problem what would be the causes of my symptoms i have already spent lot of my time energy a lot of money so far but still i am not improving will this doctor say the same thing what the previous doctors have already told me and we can see in practice many times a deal uh, non psychiatrists dealing with somatoform symptom disorders they are vexed with the patient sometimes patient doctors may feel that uh, even though we are explaining him even though we are repeatedly taking investigations him why the patient is not listening and sometime patient uh, we hear from the patient's word that other doctor has said uh, you are wantedly uh, telling these symptoms or you are overthinking these terms would have been bothering the mind of the patient before coming to a psychiatrist can this doctor identify my disease they well, like previous doctors i have said always there is no problem there is no problem but still i am having a symptom can this doctor identify my disease in how many days i am going to improve general concern like any human being the somatoform disorder patient has that when i am going to improve because already it's had been very long years of time suffering with these symptoms is treatment there for these symptoms i am consulting all the doctors doctors are giving medication use the symptoms i am using the medication but i am not improving so may get a doubt in his mind that is is there really a treatment for the symptoms or not i mean the assessment and diagnosis so keeping in mind the, all the concerns of the patient when we are assessing or when we are Uh, diagnosing there are some objectives in dealing with this such presentation of the patient clarify the patient's complaints so 
we have seen the clues for identification of the these somatic symptom disorder patients but always it's not advisable to jump into the diagnosis pay some attention spend some time in listening to the patient's complaints understand what patient wants whether his folk what what his mind is more concerned about elicit the fears and beliefs try to understand or try to clarify or focus in clarifying the fears and beliefs about the illness or say about the symptoms also please spend some time in seeing the previous referrals doctor prescription investigations and treatments what they have undergone or what they have been brought to you always remember previous investigations treatments revealing nothing in it doesn't exclude organic disease so keep in mind your examination your history taking should always focus or never miss to exclude an organic disease even though the presentation is very long identify the relevant psychosocial factors which are very individualized and many patients will have many psychological stressors try to focus and try to have a connection between some relevant psychosocial factors which are individualized to some particular patient or even though many interview and investigations have been done by the patient already it doesn't mean that the patient doesn't require any investigations further so have a, a thought that any uh, relevant investigation being can be ordered or can be advised now or not identify any drug misuse which is very common because of the chronicity of the disease and because of the suffering of the patient identify the risk of suicide or any other psychiatric disorders associated with our current diagnosis appropriate and timely diagnosis collaborative psychiatric and medical intervention degree significant long term morbidity and suffering okay coming to treatment difficult to treat as a patient as we said patient is having a belief that symptoms uh, even though our uh, symptoms have not having any organic cause underlying physical cause patient is in the belief that some physical cause should be there for all the symptoms what the patient is suffering that's the understanding of the patient and that's the belief of the patient this makes a treatment a little bit difficult another point is reassurance doesn't work usually and by the time such patients are coming to us or coming to the psychiatrist reassurance has been given by all the doctors and again when the patient coming to us we try to reassure the patient actually or frankly it doesn't work doctor patient relationship bonding that rapport is very key and when we have focus on the concerns of what patients having in the mind listening to them concerns about them addressing their stressors automatically or forming a good bond with the patient which is key for the treatment single healthcare provider seeking uh, uh, that's not always in our hands but that would help for a better treatment approach some general advices like lifestyle changes and relaxation drug treatment next slide we will go about the drugs we are going occupational and social uh, problem solving for social things we can advise psychosocial treatment cognitive behavior and other techniques we can advise such in such patients regular appointments at fixed and prearranged intervals are very very important so always sensitize the patient that you are going to improve slowly and you need to have a regular follow ups and drug compliance should be there and these things should be strongly incorporated incorporated and told to the patient clearly so always it's good to minimize the number of drugs prescribing so focus of the treatment should be daily functioning of the patient should be improved not only on managing the symptoms so some stress reduction things can be suggested to patient stress management techniques 
like yoga meditation and family members and friends also should be clearly advised or to be made understood about the symptoms promotion of self care activities relaxation breathing techniques some lifestyle changes and occupational techniques can be told so coming to medication what we would suggest in this patients we can give snri ssri or tricyclic antidepressants and some benzodiazepines benzodiazepines are going to deal with the anxiety component of the patients among the snri ssri and tcs though tcs are preferred but clinically or, or in practice we see uh, a significant improve or much uses of snri over ssris than tcs another molecule which is atypical tricyclic antidepressant opipramol is also uh, also shows a good improvement in soma reducing the somatic symptoms specialty of this is apart from the classical mechanism of action of tcs it is a sigma receptor agonist which uh, makes it makes the molecule a special thing another molecule with the brand name placida combination of lupenthixol which is a, a typical antipsychotic and meletricetan which is a tca which is which significantly decreases the symptom presentations as presentation especially in conversion disorder patients some ssri snrs we use for this symptoms are duloxetine desmoglutaxic estrolopram and tcs amitriptyline and imipramine so when to refer the patient when you have a diagnostic dilemma when you feel that you are missing something and you are, and you are not confident that patient is not fitting into somatic symptom disorder when the disease is chronic and severe illness suicidal threats and actual suicidal attempts when they are more you prefer to refer the patient in comorbid psychiatric uh, problems like severe uh, substance abuse and severe depression when there is no relief on initial treatment we should uh, refer to uh, refer plan to refer to a patient where uh, multi dimensional approach is there so thank you uh, everyone thank you sir thank you and sir thank you dr uh... Chaitanya, for your uh, very exhaustive and comprehensive presentation. Yes. Excellent. And uh, only one uh, suggestion Sir. from therapeutic point of view. Sir. You have uh, said that uh, one drug by name, uh, Flupenthixol Meritrasin. Yes, in fact, that drug was, you know, banned for some time. Yes, Again, it was uh, available now. Yes, sir. The reason is because it is a fixed drug combination with antipsychotic with uh, a typical, uh, I think, uh, antidepressant. So this uh, antipsychotic, uh, when it is used for a long time, yeah. usually this drug is used by the non-psychiatrist colleagues, yeah. especially gastroenterologists, I understand. Yeah. And uh, that causes tardive dyskinesia because yeah. of its uh, long uses. Yes. So I think we should be very careful whenever we use these drugs. Yes. And we are, we also see this, you know, uh, combinations uh, like uh, some of these uh, 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 drugs uh, with uh, antipsychotic drugs yes. used by gastroenterologists, uh, yes. those drugs we should be very careful. Yes. Other than that, I think I don't have any comment to make. And now it is open for discussion. I think uh, there are some questions in the chat box. Can you see that? Ask about the uh, role of Palmit oil, ethanolamide, and unexplained chronic pain syndrome. Sir, uh, by Dr. Nagraj. Sir, sir, what was the drug, sir? There is uh, Palmit oil, ethanolamide. Yeah, yeah. Please talk. You can un unmute and you can ask the question. Mm. Recently, it has been. Uh... Promoted from many companies like uh, many orthopedi orthopedicians are using that. It is a paroxysomal uh, active acting drug and it has got a cannabinoid G coupled receptor action. So it is used in chronic pain syndrome. Uh, 
have you ever uh, used to that or uh, any role no. in this uh... yeah so no ma'am we uh, i personally doesn't have any experience ma'am and okay sir you know, rather than focus we actually ma'am rather than focusing on the new molecules uh, coming into the market so somatic symptom disorder patients main the cause would be uh, psychosocial issues so our focus would be uh, giving medication for underlying depression or anxiety issues and addressing the psychological issues ma'am so getting the rapo concerning the what are the concerns of the patient how to make the patient understand that body is the reason mind is the reason to uh, have or produce symptoms in the body see although as i said low economic status and low educational status are the two main concerns in dealing with the patient even though we sigmund freud said mind subconscious unconscious x y z so how we make the patient understand because that's the key factor in treating the patients of this uh, diagnosis ma'am so we we have some uh, way of uh, making the patient understand that say uh, low educational status patients can't understand yeah. mind and all so we develop some simple examples in explaining them ma'am so rather than on the molecules say per se drugs we focus on uh, the psychosocial issues and uh, understand make the patient understand how the body can produce symptoms in one's body yeah. okay okay thank you the next question is uh, what are the differences between icd 11 and uh, rom 4 classification of gat functional disorders by dr v sachinarna uh, not sure sir i am not sure sir still we we are uh, learning icd 11 we have been uh, uh, we have been studying and we have been following in dsm 5 and icd 10 still icd 11 is a new to us sir so i am not familiar with this uh, classification sir uh, may i uh, respond the uh, chairperson and yeah, dr prasad please, please 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 carry yeah. on first of all i would like to congratulate the cme committee for giving a very interesting topic to start with the title Uh, i was excited to join basically because of the topic itself the topic is medically unexplained symptoms we uh, it's called uh, briefly mus and i'll briefly tell you about the story of it and the topic is medically unexplained symptoms are they purely psychological or critic uh, i would uh, definitely congratulate chaitanya for his hard work and presentation and giving i would say the psychological dimension but may i with uh, due respects uh, present to you what actually mup means mup or medically un unexplained symptoms uh, has become a kind of a gp it's a gp word uh, and i'll give you how it came lot of patients who are attending uh, seen by gps had headaches for which no physical cause was identified uh, then th there is this non cardiac chest pain which i i think we frequently used to see in the medical clinics or the cardiac uh, even cardiologists write that non cardiac chest pain uh, and of course unexplained pain abdomen bloating sensation irritable bowel syndrome uh, and persistent physical pains of any kind and irritable bladder the second part of the things the definition i mean i can go on like pseudo seizures which is a neurologist would call it non epileptic uh, seizures see it's the same pseudo seizures is not a genuine seizure and neurologists call it as non epileptic now all these things come under medically unexplained symptoms or syndrome now the absence of physical disorder in each of these criteria is this the second part of the critical question is are they psychological i think well this is not covered in this topic by chaitanya but i i would do appreciate he did cover the cbt explanation of unexplained symptoms he covered the psychodynamics of it i do ap appreciate you know the, but i think there is something which is very uh, very important when we talk about this the theme is whether it is psychological you can argue mostly for a psychological basis 
and that for that we have enough evidence and literature so that's my just submission of course i would fully agree the dsm5 and icd11 we ourselves um, myself ibl uh, gv raman rao during our times when we, we had heard lot of symptoms we heard about briquet syndrome we heard about this but finally we have come to a somatoform disorder then hysteria or hysterical conversion and hysterical dissociation in icd 8 and 9 slowly changed into conversion disorders and dissociative disorders so my my own thing is um, we need to take home message uh, one thing is that mup is now an established uh lexicon used by lot of other medical colleagues and of course once in uh, whether it is psychological the general evidence stands towards saying yes most of these medically unexplained symptoms except malingering and the other syndromes associated with malingering all are have a psychological basis and malingering as you know it is kind of a wanting le getting some gain of it so i would uh, i would close uh, with the comments that each case is unique and uh, as chaitanya presented many a times how to make this diagnosis is these people would go round and round and finally reach our psychiatrist so once they come i think the diagnosis is already made because they have a bunches of reports which are all are normal we don't need to investigate greatly uh there are other interesting syndromes which are medically unexplained but i think that would be for another symposium uh, or a talk by uh, young uh, young minds uh thank you very much for this opportunity hope i have not overstepped uh, the choice definitely, not. definitely not definitely not we have not. given a very good insights and dr prasad sir thank you for your comments uh and uh, these uh, you know uh, mm -hmm. people with uh, multiple uh, medical unexplained symptoms for example we used to see one patient uh, with cyclical vomiting she is doing her uh, i think engineering and uh, initially the vomiting uh, used to be uh, like one in two months in two months or something like that previously she was already investigated by a gastroenterologist and uh, in the, he said there is nothing gastrointestinal uh, but later on you know the frequency has increased so much every week she used to get uh, you know a bout of vomiting and used to get admitted and get well of taking iv fluids and some psychotropic medication that's so you know demanding and that uh, sometimes we don't even uh, you know deal with them and uh, we need to ask them again to get investigated because we don't know because every time every week she is coming and getting an admission so this is the nagging problem with these uh, some of these patients and uh, sometimes you know it takes so much of time for us for them to visit us or to consult us for example i have a close friend of me childhood friend and uh, he could not tolerate any food and he got investigated uh, at hyderabad uh, at the highest level and uh, he could never improve but you know he is in a big position when i just recommended him you know depending upon his symptomatology uh, uh, when depressive component and put him on uh, drug like mirtazapine there is a tremendous improvement you know he was waiting uh, for the test symptoms to come down for more than 2 3 decades uh, but he could never improve so such, sometimes you know such, uh, this gat what dr sachinangar was uh, talking about uh, in the rome classification functional gastrointestinal disorders as dr prasad was telling we have we should have a different uh, cme for this uh, syndromes so this is a very very big arena and uh, we need to you know discuss more and more especially uh, we need to even uh, focus more on some of the clinical discussions case units also in the next uh, seminars so thank you and if there are uh, any more uh, questions dr bharti is asking about uh, very very common disorders and cardiac neurosis was something which was diagnosed quite often in the past for the patients they suffer genuinely for which no medical explanation is given mm -hmm. it can be frustrating mm -hmm. it can be frustrating mm -hmm. so it is a comment the other thing uh, dr raman rao garu if i can add yeah please uh, fibromyalgia is something which is very very commonly diagnosed 
and it is quite frustrating too one of my bestie best friend in uh, usa she has this problem so she has gone to multiple uh, uh, mean uh, physicians the surgeons the neurosurgeons everyone and including the steroid injections everything she has taken and it can be you know frustrating and crippling to the patient for us you know it may be a little bit boring also because it wouldn't come down easily with many of the medications we can suggest but then to the patient it can be uh, you know quite uh, frustrating you're right uh, dr bharti thank you very much for your comment uh, and uh, i have seen uh, you know some of these patients being diagnosed as fibromyalgia in uh, us rather than in india in india i think hardly we diagnose fibromyalgia i think maybe they are uh, more aware about it and they diagnose it and uh, second other question is what is advantages of opiprimol for the tricyclic antidepressants one dr kalam so opiprimol is uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, the is an atypical tricyclic antidepressant where tricyclic antidepressants have uh, more concern with them for us is their side effects so opiprimol is not having all those side effects because at uh, uh, neurotransmitter level its uh, action is sigma receptor agonist so that's the main advantage with opiprimol opiprimol is not having the all the typical side uh, side effects which we encounter with uh, other tcs Yes, thank you. With the panel chairperson, can I kind of share some of my experiences? Yes, sir. Dr. Uh, Chetan, yeah, very congrats. You had covered this topic very nicely. Thank you, sir. Starting from this uh, state of mind and uh, all classificatory systems and management lines. Yes. Uh, Uh, this uh, medical unexplained symptoms uh, it is very common top, uh, if you which we encounter in our know, day to day practice nearly 20 to 30% of patients we see in this medical unexplained patient symptom of these patients uh, as i said uh, we should examine in detail every patient uh, thoroughly and uh, we should not hesitate to uh, his date to subject them to I think there is a break in the voice because of I think you are traveling, Dr. Ramesh Babu. Uh, one the other question is by Dr. Lalit. Dr. Ramesh Babu, can I ask some other question? Yeah, I think he is not audible. The ex medical director of CIP also used this drug, Vipramal, for such disorders. Is a comment by Dr. So, Lalit. Yes, yes, like CT scan when when are necessary because. postpartum postpartum psychosis i was in the am i audible hello yeah you are all the audible please carry on uh, uh, recently uh, i got one patient actually i saw the patient in uh, uh, four to five years ago um, with i treated her with anxiety depression syndrome syndrome with uh, various uh, uh, Sir, your voice is breaking, sir. We are not able to hear. The last two years, the inflammatory myositis. Inflammatory. Okay. Actually, I am traveling. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. So it's now. I think uh, shall we close this session, Dr. Sorry, uh, Sharad Chandra. Sir, Lokesh, sir. Ah, I don't. Prasad, uh, sir. Jay Ray, sir, sir. ఎగ్జాంపుల్స్మెండేషన్ uh, thank you sir thank so you, thank you very much and we are closing the session and over to the organizers thank you kishor uh, over to kishor for presenting the vote of thanks yes sir i honor to present vote of thanks as a presentation
చైతన్య కుమార్ సార్ ఫర్ రియలీ వండర్ఫుల్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయినింగ్ ద పేషెంట్ ఆస్పెక్ట్స్ ఆఫ్ సొమాటో ఫామ్ డిజార్డర్ అండ్ ఐ థ్యాంక్ హుమా జ్యోతి మేడం సిఎంఇ కమిటీ మెంబర్ అండ్ ఆల్సో సురేష్ కుమార్ సార్ అండ్ లోకేష్ రెడ్డి సార్ ఫర్ సెలెక్టింగ్ దోస్ టాపిక్స్ అండ్ అండ్ ఆల్సో ఫర్ ద ఓపెనింగ్ వర్డ్స్ అండ్ స్పెషల్ థ్యాంక్స్ టు మోది సార్ ఫర్ ఓపెనింగ్ రిమార్క్స్ అండ్ థ్యాంక్స్ స్పెషల్ థ్యాంక్స్ టు లోకేష్ రెడ్డి సార్ ఫర్ for introducing the chairperson and uh, dr ramana ramana rao garu for uh, uh, for the chairing session and also introducing the speaker uh, special thanks to all the audience uh, and all the ips ap members and executive ec members and uh, not more than the least uh, special uh, our thanks to east west pharma for uh, sponsoring this session thank you thank you sir